Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissistic relationships, healing from these relationships, no matter what kind they are. Have you ever been able to give really good advice to someone going through a narcissistic relationship? I bet you have. So the big question we all have to grapple with is, why can't you take your own advice? Let's break that down. I know that lots of you give great advice, right? That if so, we can't take it ourselves though. And what we can learn about this, the reason we can't take our own advice relates a lot to trauma bonding. So this video is one that I considered to be an exercise. And those of you come into retreats, you're going to see that, that you're going to, this is going to be one of our exercises, but you can also give us like sort of a, a light uh, look at this right now. So when you think about your experience with narcissistic abuse and narcissistic relationships and narcissistic people, especially when you're feeling ambivalent or stuck in these relationships, you may keep circling back on yourself and not see a clear path forward. However, when you have had friends or other people close to you, or even heard a story about something narcissistic, my guess is that you were able to either reflect on or give them some sound guidance or advice that's thoughtful and that's informed. Now, I'm well aware in all ways that it's always easier to help other people clean up their messes, literally. Like think about how efficient we'd be if we went into someone else's house and we could organize the hell out of it, but our own lives are off and our own homes are a mess and we can't figure out what to throw out. It's kind of in that vein, but let's, can you try this for yourself? Can you step back and distance yourself from your own story long enough as though, and so it's as though someone else is telling you your story enough to reflect on what advice you would give to a person who's experiencing what you're experiencing. And you can even start small. Don't make it one of your personal situations that has lots of emotion attached to it. Try something smaller that still feels difficult such as maybe you have a narcissistic partner who can never get the drop-offs and pickups and dishes and all the household stuff. That feels daunting. And let that be where you give someone advice on, right? But whatever it is, think deeply about the advice you would give someone else in your situation. Now, my guess is that you're going to give advice to that person that would be good for that person that accounts for any confusion that they may be experiencing in the relationship and would catch any of their negative self-talk that they're getting lost in. You might be a soothing, empathic, and solution-focused sounding board. So this is not an easy exercise because if you're trying to talk to yourself, you're still gonna check yourself with your usual excuses because it's hard to do this exercise by yourself because you may just keep getting pulled into trauma-bonded loops. But try it, maybe even try it with someone else right? Have them pretend they've got your problem and reflect on the advice you would give someone else whose situation was similar to yours. But in all of this, the big question is, what is stopping you from taking your own advice? Well, in the work I've done with folks, the main barriers that come up include first, your negative self-talk. The sense that someone else you're giving advice to, that they have the right or is or worthy or more deserving of taking a path that is healthier for themselves than you do. And negative self-talk usually reflects old core wounds, the internalized voices of the narcissistic people, safety behaviors that are automatic responses and that may have evolved out of years of invalidating relationships. The second are those trauma bonded patterns. Trauma bonds are like glasses that are the way wrong prescription that end up distorting your vision and giving you a headache. So when it's someone else's situation, it's like we take those glasses off, right? And we can see it clearly. The difference between what you would suggest to someone else and what you would be comfortable with doing yourself or what you're comfortable with for you is part of that distortion, those trauma bonded glasses. Now, I'm not suggesting that this exercise is going to lead you to making these new, quick, decisive decisions, but sitting in that gap between what you would suggest to someone else and what you feel able to do can help you understand why trauma bonding feels so insurmountable how you feel it in your body, the justifications you create. 
it may help you reflect on the origins of your own trauma bond as well. The third is the reality. Something I always come back to is that while trauma bonding and understanding is absolutely compelling, so too is reality. Money, support, family court, caregiving responsibilities, cultural demands around duty, family and obligation, religious beliefs, I mean the list goes on. This stuff is real. Most people out there don't have enough money to say, I'm done, I'm moving out, and I'm going to go rent my own place, or hire an attorney, or find a job, or afford childcare, or afford therapy. Many people will say that the social rejection and cultural pressure, if they were to leave, would also leave them in a precariously unsupported place. And I don't buy the feel-good, rah-rah advice of, if it's important enough to you, you will do it that you are the only thing standing in your way. I call BS on that. These pressures are real. Losing one narcissistic person in your life is one thing. Losing everyone who is close to you is quite another. And that is often the choice people face when they are having to make choices about narcissistic relationships. But that said, when you think about the advice you may give to someone else, it may illuminate some of your practical barriers and allow you to critically analyze them. Over time, you may be willing to take greater practical risks or you may also stop blaming yourself for not taking action when you see those barriers clearly. I cannot count the number of people who have said to me, I am staying in this loveless relationship because family court is not going to understand what's happening here. And I'm going to ride this out until it's more stable for my children. All of us are sages when we stand a hundred feet away from a situation and can feel horribly ineffectual and powerless when we are smack dab in the middle of it. This exercise, looking at the gaps between the advice you would give and the things you actually do in your situation can really help you think about the grace that you're willing to show yourself, the nature of your trauma bonds and the reality of your reality. It may illuminate all kinds of narratives and schemas within yourself that you don't even know and may also force you into the mental experiments that you play out in your mind to try on the different types of decisions. There's enough self-shaming in a narcissistic relationship to last someone a lifetime. But some of the worst of it comes down to how we shame our decision-making processes or our difficulty making decisions. There are no clean solutions in these relationships. There are no perfect answers. There are no perfect choices. Going no contact and cutting everyone out is not necessarily the best path, nor is staying. It all depends on your situation and the nature of the narcissistic person. But when we get lost in the idea that there is a perfect solution and we just don't know how to make it, or that we don't address the invisible and powerful force of the trauma bonds and other deeply somatically felt patterns, then we don't give ourselves the opportunity to explore the range of possibilities now and in the future and most importantly, to show ourselves a bit of self-compassion. Because models of self-compassion often suggest that we should talk to ourselves the way we would talk to a friend. And that sense that we would never talk to someone else the way that we talk to ourselves. Build on that and reflect on the advice that we give others. We can learn from it. It may not work for us, but it may give us a chance to understand our stuckness a little more clearly. Thanks again.